A hearing on a billion-dollar reparations plan that was set for today in San Francisco has been delayed. According to our media partner, the San Francisco Standard, the meeting had to be rescheduled because Supervisor Shimon Walton, who authored the resolution, had flight issues getting back from vacation in Colombia. The hearing has been nearly two years in the making and is now delayed, as we said, until next month. Joining us live now with more on the story is Josh Kane, senior reporter for the San Francisco Standard. Josh, thanks for coming on the show. Hi, Kristen. Thanks for having me. All right. For viewers who hadn't been following the San Francisco reparations story, explain quickly what the plan was and what was supposed to happen today. Yeah, so basically the uh, city of San Francisco created a reparations task force after a resolution by Supervisor uh, Shimon Walton, which he uh, authored in early 2020. Uh, over the last two years, this committee has been meeting, having actually more than a dozen meetings going back to February of last year to get ready for this big report that came out in December and a discussion that was scheduled to happen on Tuesday at the Board of Supervisors for the public to speak out as well as supervisors to consider suggested actions that could be taken. What are some bullet points details in the plan? Yeah, so uh, a lot of people have made uh, a big issue about one just proposal about giving $5 million lump sum payments to eligible black residents here in San Francisco. Um, economically, I've been told by city officials that's just not feasible. Um, and a lot of people have latched on to this just one item when actually it's a 60 page report that lays out uh, a history of how the black community in San Francisco has been displaced through urban renewal, uh, forced into bad housing loans through racist housing policies, displaced as a result of redevelopment. And, and as a result, it traces the harm that has been done to the black community when it comes to over-incarceration, uh, being arrested at a disproportionate rate, uh, education lagging, healthcare disparities. Uh, it's a very thorough report and it talks about basically making investments in the black community that could try and atone for uh, the racist past and also make real progress in helping uh, reduce disparities on these key issues. All right, so there were a lot of elements to it. It was all going to be dissected and, and talked about today. But of course, as we now know, that meeting did not happen. And I want to pull up your article again, uh, and you can walk us through what happened with Shamal Walton in Colombia. Yeah, so Supervisor Walton uh, decided he was going to go on a trip to the country of Colombia last week. I believe he left on Wednesday night. Uh, when I found out that the reparations hearing was being postponed yesterday, uh, all the way to mid-March, I had some questions of why this is happening. Uh, through the course of reporting, we found out that actually he was on a birthday party in Colombia with some of his friends. And because of some flight issues about, about getting back to the country, he wasn't going to make it. And so his office basically postponed the meeting uh, because he would be unavailable. And as a result, uh, quite a few people who have had a role in getting to this point over the, as we said, two years, uh, were very disappointed to find out that just because of Supervisor Walton's vacation plans, uh, this has been completely put on hold. The headline on your story says SF Supervisor Parties at Colombian Hooters delays reparations hearing. Look, some people are upset. Uh, some people call your piece a hit piece. What is your response to that? Yeah, so Supervisor Walton on Sunday posted to his Instagram account and it showed him and his friends hanging out at a Hooters in Medellin. Um, that is an accurate statement that he was partying with his friends in Colombia at a Hooters, having a good time up until the 11th hour when he could have actually been taking that time to, I don't know, come back and show up for work on Monday. Uh, instead, he missed a committee meeting for the rules committee that he was uh, a, a position he serves upon. And he had the board president, Aaron Peskin, fill in for him. Uh, it wasn't even actually known that he wasn't going to be back in time for the meeting until Supervisor Peskin reached out to Walton, asking him to discuss the plan for the hearing today. Uh, and Supervisor Walton informed him that he would not be coming back because of travel issues. Uh, I would suggest that anyone who considers this a hit piece, uh, so to speak, really think about like the fact that actually an entire community, the black community has been really looking forward to this hearing. A ton of work has gone into it. Taxpayer money has gone into actually these meetings and organizing this study. And so for one person to put their own vacation plans above all of that, 
while actually doing the very thing. He texted me saying he was at a birthday party for multiple friends for the better part of a week. Uh, that's not a hit piece. That's actually just facts. Uh, if Supervisor Walton wanted to make this hearing a priority, mm -hmm. he probably should have come home sooner. Has he commented? Uh, he has commented. He uh, posted on Instagram uh, a picture of our story, uh, a picture of uh, himself that we screenshotted, or not himself, I should say, but him and his friends having a good time at a Hooters restaurant, and basically said that this was, uh, you know, just a snafu of travel plans and that it was a, a hit piece uh, that really was unfair. Um, I would say that actually, you know, this is a framing that Supervisor Walton has done repeatedly over the course of the last year. Uh, if you remember, he actually got into an incident with a sheriff's cadet in which he was accused of using the N-word and basically berating this cadet for a routine uh, security check. Mm -hmm. There's also been other issues that Supervisor Walton has had in which he has routinely, in some ways, pulled the race card when his own actions are the result of these headlines. So I, I have to say that like, I don't think Supervisor Walton's criticism here is warranted. Well, Josh, in the one minute that we have left, I want to ask you, you know, when is the meeting going to happen now? And I guess, are there implications or potential fallout consequences as a result of this delay? Or is it just one month delay, no big deal, pick up where we left off, still going to pass or still going to be what it was? Yeah, the Reparations Committee has until June to deliver its final report. It could ask for an extension, but right now the clock is actually ticking for them to hash out a plan and really go through this and give a really lively discussion that you know gives input from all members of the community, from the other supervisors, uh, city departments on what they can and can't fund. There are some real actionable items within this reparations plan that I think actually have a very good chance of getting real investment from the city. And we could see that that as a really positive result in helping people within the city's black community. However, there's there, there's a timeline on this and it needs to move quick. And every week loss, whether it's one week or actually five weeks, is, is a real missed opportunity. And so I think that hopefully uh, this uh, committee can do its work. Uh, really actually uh, have a good discussion with the public and really inform people that like this is not just like a handout. This is a, a, a particularly harmed group of people that have well-documented history of how we got to today because of our racist past. And, and hopefully we can atone for those wrongs. All right, Josh. Josh Kane, thank you so much. Really appreciate it.